Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministries International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Line. My name is Pastor Paul McCoy with my co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy, and you have tuned in to the Friday Night Lights edition. First off, we thank and praise God for his many blessings, his grace and his mercy this holiday season, this season of giving thanks, this, as we call it, thanksgiving. We thank and praise God for just being God and God alone. We thank God for just being all that he has been to every last one of us in every aspect of our lives. This has been a month that we have discussed the concept of gratitude giving thanks, appreciation. What are we appreciating? What are we giving thanks for? We're giving thanks for God being God. We give you thanks for the grace and mercy that God has shown. We, we appreciate, we're showing appreciation, the aspects of appreciation for God in all of our lives. And as we know today, marks the day after Thanksgiving and it has been deemed by retailers and merchants and everyone has accepted it as being, well, almost everyone has accepted it as being what we call Black Friday. So today has been a time of shopping, a time of of receiving all these discounted items that the stores, department stores and whatnot can no longer sell. So we take this moment to rush into the stores and pick up everything that we can with less money to get more merchandise. Some things that are going to break within 30 days of us having them. Some things may last. Yet this is the time that we look for more for less. More for less. Pastor Mark last week spoke upon the book of Philippians. He spoke in detail about gratitude. He spoke in detail about the appreciation of the word of God and what God has done. Book of Philippians chapter four, verse six. And I'm just going to just kind of read through it before we move forward into our prayer. And it just says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I get, and I again say rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is the concept of gratitude, thanksgiving, being thankful. Now, this is something that we should not just share one day out of the year, but this is something that we should share every moment of our lives to say thank you, Father, in every moment of our lives. So before we move into the the message tonight, Let us just have a quick moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we first thank you. We thank you first. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for giving us hope. We thank you for everything that you continue to give us daily. We thank you for being you before we thank you for being anything else or what anything else that you may have done or that you are doing now or that you may do later in our future. We continue to ask us to give us strength to continue to give us your grace and your mercy that will abound with us all the days of our lives. And we ask that you bless this technology, bless the conference line, bless all that are listening and all that will listen in time. And we ask that you allow us to be less and you be more, that we be the instrument of your will and your way and that we speak only in love and in truth. In Jesus name, we pray this prayer. Amen and thank God. Okay. Tonight we're going to take a little bit of shift. We're still going to talk about gratitude. We're still going to talk about thanks. And this is the theme of the month. But we're going to move to the to this day. We're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about it in the concept of the spiritual realm. Those of us um, that claim to be Christians, that claim to uh, love God, and that claim to praise and worship. And I say claim because sometimes we say, and that's all we do is we speak, but our actions may be few. So we're going to go to the book of Psalms and we're going to go to chapter 
100. It is the full chapter. It's only a few verses, but it still holds great power. Book of Psalms. And if you see me looking down, it's only because I have this big old iPad and I, I love technology. It's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Book of Psalms, chapter 100. All right, then. And it reads, it starts off by saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Tonight we're going to talk about the Black Friday believer. Black Friday believer. Black Friday believer. I remember a time when Thanksgiving was a time for giving thanks and thanks alone. When people would come together, they would go to the churches, they would come together in their homes and they would share their time and moments of thanks within their lives. They would express how thankful they are for the year that God has given them, all the time that God has given them, thankful for his goodness, his grace and his mercy. And they were greatly passionate about the thanks because they knew it was important to give God thanks. They would rejoice in thanksgiving and do nothing else for the day. But we also know some would maybe watch television. The majority of us would come home and get ready to eat and eat and eat until we can't eat anymore and pass out somewhere on the couch or on the sofa or whatnot. And, and then when the time was done, we would say, we would give thanks to each other. We would hug and we would embrace and we would love on each other. And the stores would be closed because they knew that it was important for the families, all the families to come together and give thanks to God for his goodness, his grace and his mercy. But then as time went on, as everything else, things started to change. Retail, the retail departments and the companies started to realize, wait a minute, we can utilize this time to make a little bit of money. So as they as they started to seep it in, they started to sneak it in. Everybody, some people raised an eyebrow, but not enough to actually stop it. And then in time, as we know now, they introduced something called Black Friday. Now, I'm not going to go into the actual origins of Black Friday because the origins of Black Friday are terrible. But what we'll do is we'll just talk about how it all came to pass. As we call that at the end of the at the end of Thanksgiving, the stores would open up what one, two, three o'clock in the morning on Friday and give everybody an opportunity to get some bargains, discounted stuff, blockbuster, doorbuster sales. You can get from from pencils all the way up to televisions, stereos, whatever you needed. And people would flood the stores and they would get as much as they could. As time went on, people started to save for Black Friday. They started to accumulate money throughout the year so that they could be ready for when Black Friday started. They were able to get that television, that 50-inch screen television for $150. Or those, or that set, that dishwasher or that washer and dryer set for 200 bucks, which usually costs a thousand. So they enjoyed this time because it was wonderful. They flooded and they got more for less. That was the whole purpose of it. It is to get more for less. And as time went on, the department stores started to make some different changes. They said, wait a minute. We can actually push it a little bit into Thursday. These people don't really need to enjoy and give thanks all day, right? <laughs> so what they did is they started pushing it further etching it further, etching it further, etching it further. Now it's at the point where Black Friday starts at 3 o'clock on Thursday. 
The stores used to close. They no longer close. They're open all the way through it now. Why? Because they want to make that money. They want to get rid of all that junk that they have, and we think that we're getting a deal. So we continue to do this thing, and we continue to allow the camel to get into the tent. Now, what am I talking about the camel in the tent? It is a wonderful story. My dad told me some time ago, there used to be a man that had a tent, and he had a camel. The camel looked into the tent and said, it's cold out here. Can I stick in my nose? Because I'm a little bit cold. The man in the tent said, all right, you can do that. Then, then the camel said, wait a minute, it's still cold out here. Can I put in a leg? Because it's cold. He said, yeah, you can do that. Then he said, oh, wait a minute, it's still cold outside. Can I put my head in? He said, yeah, you can do that. And in, in time, the camel ended up consuming the tent, and guess where the man was? Outside. Here's the point. The point is, is that the retail business, as we know, and I'm getting to, this, to the spiritual side of it, the retail business is etching like the camel and pushing Thanksgiving further and further and further out of its time frame. And guess what? We're allowing it. Why? Because less, because we want more for less. So how does this tie into the scripture? How does this tie into the, the Christian, to the spiritual realm? It used to be, as I said before, that praise and worship and giving thanks was the primary. We would give continued thanks to God for being God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my help. Thank you for my strength. And yes, we had a list of thank yous, but yet we still gave thanks. And that was what it was all about. Now our thanks are starting to decrease, but yet our desires for grace, for mercy, for blessings are still the same and have in so many ways increased. Less thanks for more blessings. Why? Because of the fact is, is that we don't think that we have to do this because we think that, you know, this is what God does, right? God is God. So why do we have to sit back here and waste a whole lot of time while we can be at the stores searching around for cheap stuff? Instead of taking the time and the moment to be with God, to be in in, in in presence of God and to be able to just give God thanks and to share these this love with others. No, it's now it's we sit back and we wait because hey, it's almost three o'clock and and the ad said it all starts at three PM, so we need to get on out of here and move into our Black Friday. Let us look at the word if we and I'm not gonna be with you all too 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 long, but let's just start with the word. And it starts off and it says Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. At this time of Thanksgiving, at this time that we have sectioned off for Thanksgiving, the day was supposed to be for thanks and thanks alone. It really even about food. We kind of, you know, we, that was all added, but it's about giving thanks. It's about that time when we all come together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord by shouting out, thank you, Father. Thank you. For giving us this day, as the, as the Lord's Prayer says, our daily bread, not the bread of bread from the store, but the bread of life, the bread of the word. Thank you, Father, for this day. And let's share that with each other. Let's come together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, every last one of us that are breathing. Come together and give God thanks, gratitude for all that he does for each and every one of us. Even in the times we don't notice or even don't care. It's grace and mercy still about us. But right now with the Black Friday believers, the joyful noise is becoming silent because we are focusing upon what is going to be on sale. We are focusing upon what is going to be the bargain of this year. But we expect God to abound with our whispering prayers and our silent thank yous. Yet we 
ignore the, the fact that this day was never promised. This Thanksgiving was never promised. This time of confession of God's grace and mercy was never promised, yet we expect God to still fulfill his covenant in our lives. So the joyful noise becomes less and less and the searching out for the deal becomes primary or primary. We don't frequent the churches. We rarely ever come together as family. And when we do, we seek out things that are traditional, physically traditional. We seek out the food, we seek out all these things. We seek out the games, we seek out the ads. And then God is placed upon the back burner once again. Serve the Lord with gladness, not with intention. What do we mean by that? Or expectation, we can say. Serve the Lord with gladness. Be glad when you serve God. Be happy. Be glad in this. Because God is good. God deserves the service, the full service of his people. And not to just do it because we expect pay for it. Not to just do it because we expect something. Many of us, and I watch this on Facebook and others all the time, a lot of people love to love to give God thanks when they get something. I don't you barely, barely ever see them saying thanks to God until such time as they get something. Then they're like, won't he do it? <laughs> yes, he will. But that's not all God can do for you. But that's usually what a lot of people want. Serve the Lord with gladness, not expectation of a return upon your servitude. Be free with it. Come before his presence with singing, not with requesting, not always with requesting. Asking you shall receive. But right now, just take the time to sing praises to God. Yet many times we sit in these churches, we come together and we do these things and we have already a laundry list of what we want, but never say thank you, never give gratitude for what we already have because we are waiting for the Black Friday deal. We are waiting for the grace and the mercy to abound, but we are willing to pay less for it and less for it and less for it to the point where we're not even praying, but we still want God to do stuff. So we say, come before his presence, come before God, not just with a laundry list of requests, but with singing. This is still a part of showing thanks. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. God is not an ATM. He's not a mortgage dealer. It's not just some financial advisor or a bank or whatever you want to call God is God. To appreciate God for being God. Is that something that we do? Is that something that we continue to do in our lives? Do we appreciate God for just being God? Or do we appreciate God for being the resource or an ends to a means? Is this why we say thank you? Because we believe that God is crazy enough to think that what we're saying is what we mean. And then we wait for God to give us payment or compensation for our little prayers and our little shouts. And I say little because what God gives us is infinite. That we still try to Black Friday God into giving us what we want. Let's is not always the greatest. Know ye that the Lord is God, and God alone. Nothing more, nothing less, not, not, these, not these things of the world. It is he that has made us. Now let's something that, let's stop right there. Do we understand that? I, I don't think that a lot of people get that. So I believe a lot of people believe that, hey, 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 uh, you know, God is God is based upon our beliefs. God is based upon something that we that we believe that is uh, 
that is a construct of our beliefs or our mindsets. No, understand that God made us. Know that he is God and that he made us. We didn't make God. And not we ourselves. And we sure, sure didn't make ourselves in this. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we are provided by God, not the other way around. Unfortunately, people, God doesn't owe us anything. Yet we believe, just like we believe with these stores, that God owes us a deal. That we are supposed to get more and give less and less. Because we feel like, well, God has it all, so why not give us all and we give little to none? I wonder if that's fair. I don't know. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound fair to me. But that's just me. Number four says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, not with requests. Not with all these things, all these desires, but into thanksgiving. Say, come to me and say thank you. Confession, to confess thanks, to show appreciation. But yet when we walk into the church, we walk into the church with a purpose to, to receive. And usually it's not God that we want. It's usually not God that we want when we come into our churches, when we come to fellowship. It's usually something outside of ourselves, something in the world. And so we start to just build up a little bit of money or a little bit of this or a little bit of praise, a little bit of worship for that Black Friday so that we can receive a ton of grace and mercy and love and things. Usually that's the main one. We want things from God. Instead of us saying thank you for all that God has done. It's just like the Black Friday. Many of the things that we go and spend all this money on, we don't even need. But we just want it because it's on sale. Yet it's funny that the grace and mercy and the love that God shows us all is priceless. But we still think we can get it at a discount. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Praise God. Show thanks for what God is doing in your life right now. Don't be worried about the things that you think you want or even the things that you think you need. Just to be thankful for God and to enter in with thank you, Father, and the praise and worship. To just show these things, to share these things with others. And, and it says, be thankful unto him and bless his name to be thankful and to love him, that's the key. Not just to say thanks, but to actually be thankful. See, anybody can say thank you. It's easy, I just said it. But can you truly be thankful? Can you truly have a true thankfulness within your spirit for God, to love him, not for what you think he can do for you, but just to love him for being God. Is that something that we can do first and foremost? Why do we bless his name? And why are we doing all of this thanks to God? Why? For the Lord is good. Now, what makes God good? What makes God good to you? This is something you need to, I would say everybody that is listening right now that is watching, even those that may be watching later, the question is what, what is God good to you? How is God good to you? Is God good based upon the things that he can do for you? Is God good based upon the resources, the worldly resources that you desire when you receive them? 
or is just God good because God is good? Do you say, Lord, you are good only when you get something, only when you get a little bit more money in your bank or you get a little check here or or, some, or your car starts to run when you thought it was broke or when, the, when, when your favorite team wins? Is that the only time God is good to you? When you receive something? Or is God good because God is just good? Can you say God is good when all hell is breaking loose in your life? Can you say God is good when you are struggling? Is God good then too? God is good all the time and everybody loves to say that, but do we truly believe that? Do we truly give thanks for God's goodness even when things are terrible? His mercy is everlasting. This is why his mercy lasts forever, even when we don't deserve it. And you want to know why you want to give God thanks? Because his mercy is beyond your deserving of it, my deserving of it. It lasts forever. And its truth endureth to all generations. What is the truth? That God is good. That he deserves our thanks. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. His grace and mercy will last beyond heaven and earth. His love is infinite. It has no beginning nor end. So in conclusion tonight, we need to get rid of Black Friday in our lives, in our hearts, and just give God praise and thank him each and every day, showing consistent and constant gratitude. Even when we don't get the discount, even when it does not and will never go on sale. All the grace and mercy that is abound in our life is freely given. Yet a lot of people, we will say, you know, Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, I wouldn't give you, can give you enough praise. But the truth of the matter is, is that just try to use the one that you have. The one that you have is enough. And even though we may never be able to ever truly thank God enough for all that he's done, but just give him thanks with sincerity in your heart, not with expectation, just being sincere. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all the praise, of all the glory. We consistently give you thanks. Thank you for being you. Thank you for all that you do and continue to do in our lives. We ask you to just continue to bless and keep us. Continue to stand by us, stand with us, and stand for us. And we will give you thanks Every day, we will praise you and we will come into your courts with all the praise and all the worship that you deserve, that we can muster. And we will use the tongue that we give to give you all the praise and worship and thanks that we can. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And as always, if you do not know Christ and the forgiveness of your sins, if you were to die right now and you were to die right now, would you, would you know where you were going? This is the time. This right now is your time to come to Christ. In the moment, we will have our 
co-host, Pastor Mark, to pray the prayer of salvation for everyone that is listening, all that will listen in time. But come to Jesus. This is your time right now.